anything or I wouldn't have done. April the 1st, 1978, and Australian Commonwealth Police in Sydney begin a massive operation to arrest 1,000 Greek-born Australians and their doctors for crimes they did not commit. These extraordinary raids were followed by a court case of even greater notoriety, in which the police and the government victimised these people seemingly without any regard for justice or human suffering. Matthew Aretas was one of those wrongly arrested. His story is typical of many. Yeah, I come to Australia because money, the government of Australia was asking for migrants at the time, and um, we decided with my wife, if we come to Australia, we have a better life. And I uh, started to work in Mount I work in the Mount mines. And then we decided to go to Sydney to stay because we found that was most of uh, Greek people there. We didn't speak any English at the time. And we went to Sydney and we started working in the Sydney Opera House until I fell down to a hole about eight feet down and I hurt my back on the concrete. I went to the hospital from there and then straight after that to sickness benefit. I've been in and on on sickness benefit um, uh, up to 1978. And uh, 1978 uh, I was sleeping, it was I think Saturday morning. About five o'clock, I heard a very, very loud knock on the door. So I stand up with my pajamas and I went to open the door and there was two gentlemen and they told me that there was uh, detectives. Are you Matthew Dimitri Aratas? Yes. We're from the Commonwealth Police. We'd like to talk to you about a social security fraud. What do you mean? We'd like to ask you some questions. Can we come in? Uh, or, all right. They come very rough in it. And they look, the drawers and everywhere, they throw everything down on the floor. They took the money box of the children, they got their money box, the children there and there. Uh, they make mess in the house. You're on a pension, aren't you? Pension? Uh, uh, no, I get the sickness benefit. And do you have a bank account, Mr. Aratas? Yes, I do. And uh, how much money would you have in this account? Fifty, sixty dollars. Uh, but why do you ask? Do you have any other savings? No, that's all, that's all the money we have. And what about all this money you're getting from the government? What do you mean? You know what I mean. Social Security. Matthew, what do you need to do, Mesa? Tipota, in Astromia. What do they want? Speak English. Tipota, what do you want? What do you want? At the time of his arrest, Matthew had no idea what he was supposed to have done wrong. His bewilderment was shared by nearly 200 others, dragged from their beds in the early hours of the morning and charged with plotting together to defraud the Australian government. Like most of them, Matthew was detained because he had a Greek-sounding name, was receiving welfare benefits from the government and was a patient of one of five doctors police mistakenly believed were involved in a massive fraud ring. The arrested patients had all been certified by these doctors as suffering from physical or mental disorders, and it was on this basis that they were receiving their welfare payments. The police claimed they were faking their illnesses to obtain these welfare benefits, and it was alleged that the doctors had been selling them false medical certificates, which were used to perpetrate the fraud. It was further claimed that the whole racket was run by a secret underworld organisation supposedly called the Colpo, something like a Greek version of the Italian Mafia. Hundreds of alleged Colpo members were said to have returned to Greece, where, according to police, they were living like kings on their illegally obtained pensions. This was the beginning of what immediately became known as the Greek Conspiracy. It was also later called the Social Security Conspiracy, but the first name stuck. Greek it remained to the extent that the Greek community stood accused, divided, dishonoured and ashamed. To understand why members of the Greek community became victims of this modern-day witch hunt, we need to go back to 1977 and look at the political and social factors that led to this case. Life wasn't meant to be easy, according to Prime Minister Fraser. 
and there was at the time a drive by the government to slash welfare spending. Among those who suffered most were the unemployed, the disabled, and migrants from non-English speaking backgrounds, especially those receiving sickness benefits or invalid pensions through the Department of Social Security. In 1977, within the department, there was a lot of prejudice by the staff of the department, a hell of a lot. Every time a Greek or an Italian would come to the counter, I'd usually get staff coming back to me saying, we've got another Greek or WOG claiming a pension and they want to take it over back to their own country using the portability scheme. The pensions portability scheme allowed invalid and old age pensioners to receive their pension payments while living overseas. Yet, ignorance and prejudice led to hostility towards those using the scheme, even though it was available to all Australians, regardless of ethnic origin. Well, staff thought that once they got a pension or sickness benefits, these beneficiaries, these ethnics were made you know, for life, that they would uh, live a life of ease on a Greek or, or Italian island, having a pretty good time living it up. The majority of these people who came from Greece came from villages and the standard of education in the villages is not very high and especially in their era they didn't even have to go to school and their parents usually used them in the fields so they were mostly literate in the Greek language. The custom in Greece is that if there's one literate man in the village that is a person who can understand government forms and uh, anything that has to be filled in he is the one that does it for them. Often, if these people had to go and see doctors in Athens, they would take one of these literate people from the village with them. So it's very much a custom that they have somebody go along with them and help them out with language problems and with writing problems. Here in Australia, some of these better educated Greeks made their living by interpreting and giving assistance to their less fortunate compatriots. In the Greek community, they're called mesazondes, or ipractores, middlemen or intermediaries. Pimos Hatsipanayotis was one of them. His work involved organising medical care for his clients and helping them to apply for welfare benefits. A charge for providing this sort of service is perfectly legal. But Demos's work as a praktora was misinterpreted by the police, who claimed he was running a fraud ring through which anyone could buy an invalid pension. Because of his association with Demos, Dr. Alex Takminzis was also to be accused of working for this supposed criminal conspiracy. I met Demos many years ago. It would have been when I was a medical student and he was taking patients to my father. My father was a Greek doctor uh, he was born in Greece, he studied medicine here, but he had a large Greek practice and uh, Demos took patients to see him. Later when my father died, I just started practice and I took over his practice and uh, Demos and the patients came with it. In my own case, I never learned Greek, never went to Greek school. I understood a reasonable amount of Greek, but I couldn't speak sufficiently to communicate with a patient. So uh, Demos used to bring them here and interpret for them. What's some names for you? It, it was uh, an interesting concept. He was sort of like a father with his little chick, if you like it. And he shepherded them around and took them here and there. And, and, uh, and I've got no doubt that uh, he regarded himself as fulfilling a, a necessary service, and I think he did. Despite his benevolent reputation, Demos was a shrewd businessman who was willing to help anyone apply for an invalid pension. This was a time-consuming process involving many visits to doctors, specialists, and finally, an examination by government doctors. Demos charged a bulk fee for this service. And for those who could afford it, it was up to $2,000. But for those he felt sorry for, it was a case if they paid little or nothing. However, there was a great deal of resentment within the Greek community towards operators like Demos. After all, these misazondes were charging people for help in obtaining government benefits, which they could have obtained free of charge if they'd known how the system worked. To make matters worse, there were one or two crooked operators who were taking large sums of money for services they never intended to provide. 